the Bitcoin dump. I'm the altcoin analyst. Nothing here is financial advice. Let's dive in. The first thing we're going to talk about is the obvious pullback today. Now we can start to mark out the chart here and we have our range highs and then we have our range lows. And I think this area, the mid range here is also a pretty important part of this technical analysis. And that's simply because we've held it as resistance, came back, exploded through it and held it as support. Now we are here once, twice, now three times. And as of making this video, it looks like we're going back down. So what does this mean for the crypto market? What does this mean? Well, let's go over to a tweet that I retweeted here and skew is a he's a trader and i believe he does a lot of technical analysis and order book work so i think a lot of his trades are based on order books or i see a lot of order book type setups from him now if we go over here quickly if we scroll down the aggregate cbds and delta so this is kind of what he he uses to trade and and i think he has a pretty unique perspective or whoever is running this account. So they put out something today where if this current, if this current daily range is anything like the 2021 distribution, you can't really see that, but I, I've, I've said it, <laughs> we could see something like this potentially bounce from mid range into new high absorption of buyers and lack of momentum Retrace creates high time frame LL, dead cat bounce into known market supply, retrace to range low, actual breakdown occurs. Now, I'm not the only one saying that we could potentially break down out of this level to the downside. The longer we stay in this range, I start to hear more and more people say this is a distribution. Why are we not going up if the having had such an impact, if the Bitcoin spot ETF was so impactful and there's only inflows and only people are buying, why are we having this sort of distribution phase? Well, it could be an indication that we're going lower. It could be people are selling, believe it or not. Now, I don't think if we come down here, it's necessarily gonna be just straight down. I think that would be a little extreme, Although it is possible. So what are our major catalysts in the market coming up? Well, if we look at the S&P, and I want to bring this up before we talk about a little bit about the S&P, but in the kind of mid, early to mid trading day time period, we had quite the rejection kind of off this level. And then it wasn't until later in the, in the trading period that we had this new rally. And I don't think, did we go on to new all-time highs? I think we probably did. It looks like it, 5375. Yeah, it appears that the S&P did put in new all-time highs today. Now, we do have the Fed meeting tomorrow. We do have CPI coming out this week. Those are always volatile days in the market. Now, what is the Fed gonna say to reassure us? Because we have other banks cutting their interest rates. We have the unemployment going up. We now have those CNBC analysts saying, oh, there's cracks in the economy. There's cracks in the economy, but we're still going to a soft landing. So I think what the Fed says tomorrow is going to have a direct impact on the price. As generally it always does. There's always some volatility based on what the Fed says. So that's something to take into account. Now, what does that mean for Bitcoin? Well, if we go back to the Bitcoin chart here, the S and P put a new all time highs today and Bitcoin did not. So I tend to think that's an indication of how people are feeling about risk assets in the market. Now, if we go back to Twitter here, I did put a, <laughs> an interesting tweet out. I just said rip altcoins like 20 hours ago. Cause I kind of saw this coming. And then someone said, Bitcoin dominance is going down though. So, the next thing we're going to talk about is, of course, the Bitcoin dominance. If we go to the Bitcoin dominance, it doesn't look like it's going down. This looks like it's about to break up to new all-time highs. Now, for those that are in altcoins right now, and you look at your portfolio and you think you're holding up well right now, 
that will change very quickly if we end up breaking down. Your altcoin portfolio will start to go down 70, 80 percent. Believe it or not, that's that's how altcoins work. So if you haven't secured profits on your altcoins, and actually this is a good example. If we bring up Arrow, I had someone comment on one of these videos. Hey man, I was DCAing from 35 cents to 50 cents and I was DCAing in there and I'm up quite a bit and it was sitting at $2. They're sitting up, if they didn't sell, they're down 63% from their all time high. And from their cost basis, they are up about 83%. So that's why I'm very, I think really the only DCAing winning strategy in crypto is DCAing Bitcoin. Because again, Bitcoin is not down 50% from its all time high. Bitcoin is not down 80% from its all time high. Bitcoin is not down 60% from its local high. It's, we can actually measure it. It's down 9% from its all time high. Find me an altcoin that's down 9% from its all time high. I'll wait. Let's go to Ethereum. Ethereum, again, probably not down 9%. Ethereum is down 15%. Your second best altcoin is down 15% comparatively to Bitcoin. So again, someone asked, I want to DCA Ethereum. Fine. DCA Ethereum. I don't care. <laughs> but if we go to the BTC chart, again, this, what I've been saying is now, I think, starting to play out. Everyone was saying we're going to new all-time highs. Well, that didn't play out. Pretty clear downtrend. And I tend to think this is probably going down a lot lower, especially if we correct. Bitcoin dominance is appearing to break out. And so this alt season that everyone is, is saying is coming is not. It's going further and further away from alt season. If we go to the altcoin season index on into the cryptoverse, we can see that when this loads, that yikes, it's, it's looking pretty bad. And here's the thing, Bitcoin hasn't even like, Bitcoin's down 9% off its all time high. That's, and we're starting to see altcoins just completely get wrecked. Yes, over here, if you had bought, I think there was like, in 2022 lows, if you had bought CAS, or if you had bought, there was one other one, or INJ, those were the only two that really outperformed this bear market. Then over here, if you had bought WIF or Arrow, again, those were the, and I'll throw Pendle in there as well. Those were kind of the only three, and sure, a few AI coins, there was like two or three AI coins that you could have purchased in here. So there's less than 10 tokens that did really well since the lows. Outside of that, what percent are they up now? Well, they're getting wrecked a lot quicker than Bitcoin is if you didn't take profits. Imagine if Bitcoin comes back down here to 38,000. A recession can easily put us down through there. The more we don't go out and put in new all time highs, the more I'm thinking we're probably going to play out similar to 2019, come down for three, six, nine months, and, and then go off into that, that crypto boron that's going to bring us north of 100K. So I don't know how many times we've seen banks come out and random hedge funds and random talking heads saying 200,000 end of the year, easy money. And if it's too good to be true, it generally is. You guys know my strategy. I'm pretty simple. I DCA Bitcoin, I yield farm stables, and I get into altcoins when I think they're undervalued. Right now, if we go to altcoins and we'll go to Namecoin, Again, I don't, I'm, I'm never going to buy Namecoin, but I think it's a coin that helps me highlight my point. We go to Max. If we look between these mania phases here, we can point to times of expansion and times of contraction. Over here, we had a nice little run. Again, over here, we had a nice little run. And so, but none of those led into mania phases. And if you didn't take profits, you immediately lost all your gains. Now, again, another reason why I point to this coin is because one, 
it was shilled by Charles Hoskinson on a TED Talk. But two, it's put in a lower high every cycle. There are generally two main reasons for that. Token unlocks and the product isn't being used or the protocol isn't being used or the chain isn't being used. Take your pick. That's why most altcoins go on to put in lower highs each cycle. There's only been a handful, and actually Doge is the only one that's been around for all three cycles, aside from Bitcoin that's gone on to put in new all-time highs. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's accurate. There has been other, there's like a few other select tokens that have been around for two cycles that went on and put in a new all-time high each of those cycles. And again, that's Maker, ADA, and BNB probably. There might be one or two others. I, I tend to think that the only way to succeed in crypto is building out a strategy and so roaring kitty is is pretty big right now he's all the talk and even he says have a plan because if you don't have a plan and you're simply coming into this market going oh i think i'll buy this because some influencer said it was good ah i think i'll buy this because i think it's gonna go up you're gonna get wrecked <laughs> there's no other way about it so again i'm gonna be I'm still watching this range here because if this range breaks down again, I tend to think we're probably going a lot lower. I'll catch you guys at 38,000 if we do, and then we'll reevaluate, see if we come back down to this level. I think if we go into a pretty bad recession, you'll be surprised that this, like how quickly we get there and likewise to 38,000. And so I know there's like a huge narrative that we're never going back below 50,000 again. I mean, that that just hurts my brain to think about that. <laughs> because as much as I would like for that to happen, I'm also in the camp of wanting to make money. And so by sitting here saying, nope, we're not we're not coming back below this level because because plan B or whatever said so, it's I mean, we very well could just kind of sit up here and sit up here and then go off. But is that realistic? And some of you might be saying, no, that's how the, that's, that's how Bitcoin works. The having, you're going to have the miners push up the price. You're going to have the market makers. Everyone wants it to go up. Yeah. It was the same narrative we heard back here. Same narrative we heard back here. And again, if you're in the space long enough, that's what you hear at each top. And also coincidentally at each stop, you see celebrities come into the space and rug their fans, which is just absolutely unreal. So I, I mean, Believe me, I will be saying it's going to go up only because it will, but I'm just not convinced it's happening yet. And again, if we look at the Bitcoin search terms interest over time for the past five years, because I like to compare it with several data, we can see that it's came back down to 20. So this whole time that people are saying, no, no, no mania phase, we're going up to the hundreds. Each pump is just kind of been lower and lower and lower. I mean, it does oscillate, so I tend to think we will probably get a pump up and pump down, similar to kind of what we did over here. And then I think next year is when things start to get crazy. Twelve, yeah, thirteen thousand, and everyone was saying twenty thousand all time high. Well, we've actually hit the all time high, and people are now saying a hundred k by the year end. Some are even, some people are even saying Q three, which is in like two months. Two months, we'll be at two hundred k. And so what's their incentive to tell you that the price is going up to 500k by the end of this year? That's something that you're going to have to figure out. So the last thing I want to talk about here is if we go to the crypto indicator dashboard and we look at the social risk. Again, I tend to think that this is this is not bullish. Like I'm not convinced that it's going up. Like I'm not convinced the interest is going to come in. I mean, we might slowly trend up for six months. But I don't think we're going back above 0.4 for the next few months. A recession is going to absolutely just destroy this market. So I live by let the market come to you. It's anyone's guess how this plays out. But I think it's very interesting to see that the Bitcoin dominance is starting to tick up. We're not putting in new all-time highs. And I think any one of these three scenarios is probably likely to happen. Now, again, the timing on this, like, I don't think it's going to happen. Like, I don't think we're coming back down here in 2026, but 
I think we'll probably see maybe a, a steep sell-off to one of these levels. And then it'll resolve itself when the Fed starts printing money again. So that's, that's if you want to know when to buy altcoins, when the Fed starts printing money, it's pretty simple. You might want to wait uh, like a month after that, because generally there's like a, a lagging effect with what the Fed can do. But again, not financial advice, but it's that simple. When the Fed starts printing money, I buy altcoins. So, and that chart is not the USM2, although it's going to be interesting to see if they're going to keep printing or increasing the money supply. I don't know what they're going to do with inflation, if it's going to keep going up. They just, are you just going to hyperinflate the dollar? I don't know. <laughs> but when this starts going up, when this chart starts going up, to me, that becomes interesting. So, like I said, I don't really care what Bitcoin does in the short term. Although my bias is to the downside, especially since we got such a nasty rejection off the off range highs. And we're just, I mean, tomorrow we might even fill this wick. So that's something to keep into account or, or this trading day. So with that being said, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.